Hey everyone, my name is Sebastian Jaya. I'm here with Derek Craig, um, here with Oilfield Basics, and today we're going to talk about frac kits. That's right, frac kits is a pretty hot topic in our industry, especially as the development of the shale plays across the U.S. continue. So today we're going to be talking about what it is, why it goes on, and also some mitigation techniques that have been used. So stay tuned, we're about to dive in. First, the definition. So a frac kit occurs when you're hydraulically fracturing a well, and those hydraulic fractures communicate with the wells nearby. Thus, that well gets frac hit. So on an aerial view, this is what it looks like. So you've got an existing well pad. In this case, you've got three laterals. Then you come in and you drill three new laterals, and you're going to be fracking this one first, let's say, in this example. So as you hydraulically fracture this lateral, it's going to communicate. It has the potential to, given distance and things we're going to be talking about it can impact this old well, this pre-existing well. So this, these wells are gonna get frac hit. So frac hit can range in intensity from just mere pressure communication. You can see a little bit of a pressure spike in the offset laterals or clear to um, sand issues where you're getting literally sand in other laterals nearby and you can pack off that lateral. We're gonna talk about all this and more, but it's important to note that it can also impact not only horizontal, but vertical wells as well. So as I alluded to before, the significance of a frac hit and the severity can range depending on the scenario. So we have a lot of factors that can affect how significantly a well gets hit by a frac. A lot of it is going to depend on the things that we have here on the screen. The first one being well spacing. So how close are the existing wells to the new well that is being fracked? That is a major player. So if you're 500 feet away or less, from the new well, it's going, you're going to get hit probably a lot harder than you would if you're a thousand or two thousand feet away from that new well and the well that is being fracked. So well spacing drastically matters in this case. Also formation characteristics. So one of the big ones is going to be permeability. So permeability basically refers to the ability and the easiness of fluid to flow through your reservoir. So if you've got a pretty permeable formation, you better believe that everything you're fracking uh, this well with, the, the water and everything, the sand even maybe, is going to make its way to these offset wells if it's very permeable. And like otherwise, you know, if it's not a very permeable formation, it might not get as frac hit as, as hard. Another formation characteristic that is, is important is any faults or regional faulting that is going to give it a conduit for that fluid to make it from the new well to the older well and hit it harder. So formation characteristics. Also, some operators are finding that bubble point matters. So without getting too technical into what bubble point is, basically if you've got an oil reservoir, bubble point is when you start getting gas to break out of your oil. So if you've reached bubble point, then you're more at risk for a harder frac hit than if you were still above bubble point. And a lot of that refers to the natural pressure of that reservoir. So which leads us into the third point of pressure depletion. If this well has been there longer and it's drained a, you know, a good portion of that reservoir and the pressure has decreased, then you are basically creating a pressure sink for this new frac. So as we know, pressure flows from high to low, so you are more likely to get a harder frac hit on a well that has been there longer. And so basically what that's referring to is a parent-child relationship. So you've got the parent wells and you've got the children wells. So this child, if this parent has been there longer, it has a greater ability to impact that well's performance. Also, one thing to note is natural stresses can affect how significant a frac hit is. So fractures will grow in a very specific orientation based off of the natural stresses in that formation. So depending on, on those stresses and which direction your frac is likely, likely to go, if your well is in that direction, you again have a greater chance for getting frac hit. It's also important to note that a frac hit has the ability to drastically reduce a well's production. So again, like I said before, it can just, you can see a little bit of a pressure difference. Uh, you can see a pressure response from a frac hit from a, a child to a parent. Also, it can range clear to where you're basically just trashing that well, really hammering on its production. It's really going to change it. We're going to talk about that more in the next slide or two. Also, you can damage equipment, and we're going to talk about this mitigation of this on the next couple slides, but if you're if sand especially is traveling all the way into your parent well, into your offset well, that has the vast ability to destroy and ruin any types of artificial lift equipment that you have in that well. It's a big problem and also it has the ability to overpressure that well, which can lead to issues as well. So we're going to talk about these things and more on the mitigation slide. 
All right, so now getting into the mitigation. So now that we know some of the causes and reasoning behind a frack hit, what can we do to mitigate the risks? So first off is, is flat out avoiding it. So doing everything we can to avoid the risks of a frack hit on the, the parent well or the offset wells. First one, this is a very important point, is to provide notice. So if, you, if it's the same company that has all of these laterals, they, they likely know it's coming. So notify your production team. But if, if it's other operators, you can definitely notify the other operator of, of the parent well so that they know to expect potential frack communication so that they can prepare and do some of the other things we're going to talk about. So, so as I alluded to on the last slide, one of the effects of a frack hit can be damaging downhole equipment. So something, especially in Texas, where there's a lot of rod left in the oil plays, a lot of times operators will go ahead and pull the rod pumps out of the hole so that they don't get damaged by potential sand and flux into the offset well. So that's one thing that people do. Also, modify equipment. So you want to make sure that the pressure rated, rated equipment on the offset wells can handle potential, the potential of the pressures that you might see from this uh, frack hit. So this is especially important when you're around vertical wells that are around the same formation depths. You want to make sure that those can withstand the pressure of an oncoming frack hit. Also, some operators will shut in the well. So this is an attempt to try and let the parent wells or the offset wells build their reservoir pressure back up so that there won't be as much of a pressure sink so you don't get hit as hard. Now, some operators still do this. A lot of people have found that it doesn't actually help very much. You're never, it's gonna take a long time to build up to your reservoir pressure. And oftentimes it's not worth the production loss. So a lot of operators aren't doing this. Some don't even shut in at all. They might only shut in if they see a lot of influx in fluid or a drastic change in pressures or whatever be the case. Also, another thing people are doing sometimes to avoid frack hits is to pressure up on the well. A lot of times, I don't figure the economics are largely there for this in most cases, but there are some ways you can actually apply pressure at surface to the offset wells to try again to decrease that pressure sink. Another way to potentially mitigate the risks of a frack hit is to install packers or plugs down hole. So again, this is just trying to help provide isolation of the surface equipment. So you don't have to worry about swapping out your well head parts or anything to make sure it's up to spec. Um, this might be one way you can avoid some of those costs and also maybe to help, again, help with the pressure sink that it won't be as severe and take on as much fluid or, or as much of a frack hit. All right, so now that Derek has covered um, the avoidance of a frack hit and he discussed kind of the technicalities of what a frack hit is and the signs that you could see um, now I'll be discussing kind of the operations and what happens during um, fracturing operations once they, once they begin on the new wells, um, the child wells. And so one important thing the operators will do will be monitoring offset well pressures. And so even if those wells aren't the operators um, that they're drilling next to, um, most operators will monitor those pressures to take note of when a fracture might be coming and also the severity of a fracket. And so the higher the pressures that you see on the older wells, then it's a sign that you might have a greater chance of um, your downhole equipment being um, contaminated by fracturing fluids and sands um, from the new wells. And also you'll mo want to monitor the offset well productions. And so obviously if your production um, goes all the way down to nothing, then that's a clear sign that your well has been fracted pretty, pretty badly. And so operators will look into these things um, greatly. And one thing, um, if you ever get the chance to look at a production decline curve um, of a fracket well, then you'll notice that your casing pressure will increase um, at the same time that your gas production or your oil production is decreasing. And so that's a clear sign of a fracket coming. And then you'll also see your water volumes increase, um, which goes to show that the fluids from the um, newly drilled and completed well have traveled into your um, already producing well. And some companies will even um, put in tracers and micro seismic to really help them visualize the complete um, fracture network that they produce with their new well. Um, even some operators will pump tracers um, into their completion fluids and they'll try to see if that fluid has reached um, the fractures and the well of the parent well and then that will give them a clear sign of 
whether or not um, the fractures have been communicating and um, how, severe, how severely um, the well has been fracked. Okay, so now that I mentioned uh, what happens during in a fracket with the child and parent well, I'll now be discussing what happens after your parent well has been fracked and what you should expect. And so there's a very good chance that your well is no longer producing. Um, you know, production of oil and gas is zero right now, and so what's on your priority is to load that well as quick as possible and return it to sales um, because time is money and you need production back up. And, and so with that being said, a lot of operators will try to unload the well as quick as possible, and some options include nitro lift, um, which is a quick option to inject nitrogen down your well and unload it of any um, fluids. And this is very popular among gas lift wells where fluid is um, very difficult for the well um, because the more fluid, then the more loaded it is. And you could also have wells um, with plungers downhole or even tubing that just got completely sanded off and you might have to replace um, that equipment and so it all depends on what's in your well and what kind of artificial lift method you had before the well. And if you didn't have any artificial lift um, before the fracket, then it's a very good chance you'll have to install something to load the well to return it back to sales. And like I mentioned before, you'll see a large increase in water and sand production in that well. And with that, then you could have increased sand plugging, um, not just in your tubing, but you could even see that in your casing if your well does not have tubing, and also with your downhole equipment. And lastly, to clean out your well from that sand, you may have to bring in a workover rig to drill out any sand or any obstructions within your lateral, and that would allow it to return back to sales. And if a well, or if the field is in a kind of scale prominent area, then there's a very good chance you'll see increased amounts of scale within your well, which at that point, the acid treat could be um, a feasible option, but if there's a lot of sand in your well and you've seen sand return to equipment on service, then it's very high chance you'll have to bring a workover rig to ensure that there's no obstructions um, within your entirety of the well. All right guys, so thanks for joining us for another episode of our video blogs here at Oilfield Basics. We're happy to have you. Be sure to check out our courses at oilfieldbasics.com learn. If you want to learn more about hydraulic fracturing, the processes, the the sand, the chemicals, the water, everything, the design of fracture, everything, all that's in our courses and more. Check them out at oilfieldbasics.com learn. And also be sure to subscribe to us on our social media platforms. Obviously check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and also Messenger on Facebook. So check us out, subscribe, follow us. If you've got any questions or comments, please comment below. And we look forward to hearing from you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah.